Hello everyone, I'm Savannah and I'm going to be showing y'all how I built my first ecosphere and y'all can follow along step by step and see how I did that but first I want to go over what an ecosphere is and then we can dive into how to make one for yourself so an ecosphere is supposed to be a closed ecological system where all of the components are interacting together to sustain life. So if you want to take a look at that diagram, you can see that everything is working together and needs the, the thing to happen beforehand. I'm not going to dive too deep into this because we've probably seen this system a lot where the sun is providing energy, the plants and algae are providing food for the for any animals so you know that kind of thing so the main takeaway is that you want the conditions of the ecosphere to be capable of sustaining life all on its own the microorganisms algae plants bacteria any bugs snails or shrimp they should all have everything they need inside without you having to feed or provide them with anything so in my case, I have never made one of these before, so it will be more of an experiment, which I'll learn more about along the way. I believe I have provided everything for the system to sustain life, but sometimes the balance of things can be off, but only time will tell, so let's jump in and enjoy the ride. <laughs> All right, so let's go over the materials you will need to create your own ecosphere at home. To start, you're going to need a airtight container. So you can see here, I have a glass container and it does seal completely. So no air can get in or get out. I also have some charcoal, which is the same you can use to grow. And this is important because of the carbon amounts in the charcoal. It's going to keep our system balanced with the amount of carbon and oxygen. This is some potting mix. The nutrients that are in this potting soil are going to help on top of the things that we collected from the creek. Just going to put a little extra nutrients into there. And this is our protein mix, which is going to feed our buggies and keep them all full in their tummies. Ah, <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding, you guys. This is actually the water from the creek that I went to. There's a park nearby my house that I just took these tubs to and collected some things. Also got these sticks and some mud leaves. I think I got a couple pine cones. I don't know, I was just kind of collecting whatever I saw, and hopefully I got some bugs in there too. This is some plants that I got from the creek, just pulled them right out of the water, really. I also tried to get some moss, and hopefully these things will stay alive in the system. You'll also probably need a rag of some sort just to help keep clean during the process of making your ecosphere. So to start, we need to take some of this charcoal and break it up into smaller pieces so we can put it at the bottom of our ecosphere jar. So I'm just taking this piece of charcoal and I'm going to smash it with a hammer. <laughs> so grab my hammer. So I'm just crushing it. It doesn't have to be super fine. You can have some chunks in it too. It doesn't, it, I don't think it really matters how small it is because at the end of the day, we just want that carbon source in our jar. This is actually pretty satisfying, like 
getting to crush up the charcoal and scraping it is really fun. <laughs> All right, so I'm dumping one piece of crushed charcoal into the jar now, but I'm kind of thinking that this is too little of an amount for this huge jar. So I went ahead and crushed up two more pieces of charcoal and that equates to two, one plus two, three pieces of charcoal. But yeah, so we got these Three pieces of charcoal all crushed up and it is at the bottom of our jar. Alright, the second ingredient is our potting mix. So I'm going to just add a couple handfuls into the container. I think that will that will suffice. We don't need too much because of the items collected at the creek. So this is just enough. Um, it's kind of, you eyeball the whole thing really. Next is, is our mud and all of the other little items collected. So I'm just taking out these branches and rocks and stuff. Um, so they don't get completely crushed when I dump the mud in. I was just trying to get a wide range of items so we could kind of fill the container with an array of things that would be good for the, for the ecosphere. So that's what's left and let's dump it without me trying to spill it. Oi. Mmm, you better eat up. We got some tasty croak mud. I'm just trying to bang the rest of this stuff out. Mm. Mud is pretty sticky, you know? So, uh, I'm probably gonna have to add some water to this. Now, let's see if I can do this without spilling. Oi! One handed task. Ay! <laughs> A little bit more. I'm just trying to make sure there's not any bugs left over in this little bit of mud, you know? Trying to get everything out. I don't know if you can see him clearly, but there's a little guy right on this rock. Look at him, oh my goodness. So now we're gonna get these little sticks and rocks and put them into our container.
Next is the green stuff. So I'm just going to put these guys in one by one. Uh, there ain't no rhyme or reason. Just trying to get them to kind of float on top of the water and fit all of them in properly. I'm using this little twig to clear the soil out uh, enough so I can make a little hole to put the roots of the plant into the water mm, while trying to keep him upright. I forgot I collected more rocks, so here are those, and I'm just going to plop them on in, trying not to plop them on top of any plants. I've got a few of these fuzzy guys and I just want them to lay on top of the water so I'm going to go ahead and add them kind of adding the final touches now So this is what we have so far, and it's a bit murky in there, but I haven't added the water yet, so it should clear up a bit. And these are our little plants, and give you a better look at those in the inside. All right, next we are going to add the water. And honestly, I'm thinking I should have put the water in before I put the plants in because the water is a bit heavy on top of those plants getting, getting poured in. But um, there's nothing really I could do about it now. But if you make one of these, you might want to put your water in first, just so it doesn't mess up the way you have things going on. But it didn't mess up mine too much, so it's really not that big of a deal. Nah. There is a millipede in the water container, so I'm going to grab this <laughs> stick so I can kind of pull them out and... Put them into the ecosphere. You don't want to leave any stragglers. So, this is kind of like fishing. <laughs>
Come on, baby. Let's go. Come on. Nah, nice feather. We got him all settled in. We good. And seal the jar. Woo woo. All right, I have moved it into the house now, and I see a little creature we got. I'm actually making a lantern. See, girl, I've never made a lantern before. See, girl, so cute. I love it. The next day. Here is the ecosphere. And as you can see, the water has cleared up a good bit. It's still a bit murky. Um, but, you know, a lot has settled out. And there is some condensation on the sides of the container. Which is good, knowing we have enough moisture in there. And as you can see, there's a lot of settling to be done as any slight turn or bumping the jar makes a lot of that soil from the top still kind of fall down. So we'll see that settle out more as time goes on. And what I'm looking at here is some air bubbles under the water, which is also a good sign. 